fair, well, this is uh, from B1. This is about genes and chromosome and gender or determination of sex, in other words. A uh, little bit on, on genes and chromosomes, first of all. Something people um, do tend to get a little bit confused with. If we think of um, a cell, and I've drawn this nucleus rather large here, it's not usually this large, and that's the kind of classic picture, uh, the way that we perhaps picture a cell with the nucleus in the middle. Now, contained in the nucleus are um, the DNA, and DNA is not a very good picture here, it's a kind of spiral or double spiral, technically called a double helix. Um, and it's made up of repeating chemicals over and over again. And the DNA inside of the nucleus is actually found in long, long strands called chromosomes. So if you imagine a huge long strand of this stuff, that would be a chromosome. Now, in humans, we happen to have 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nucleus. So in overall, that's 46, 23 pairs. 23 come from the mother, 23 from the father. Now normally the chromosomes, they aren't nice and straight like this, they're just a big tangled kind of mess and you wouldn't even be able to see them. If you looked at the nucleus um, you wouldn't see anything in there. The reason we see this as a, a kind of dark blob in the middle is you had a chemical called a stain and it would make the nucleus um, become visible, perhaps change colour. The word chromosome itself, the way they were discovered, was adding a different kind of stain and people discover these long strands inside the nucleus. And chromosome basically means coloured body. Because nobody knew what they were at the time, they were just these strands that showed up. But normally when you look at a, a nucleus, you can't see anything, it's just too small or the, to be visible. Now, sometimes, I think this can, becomes a bit confusing, you'll see pictures of chromosomes that look like a kind of X shape. Um, that is still a chromosome. In fact, what's happened here is this is um, part of something called mitosis, which is when cells divide. And what happens when the cells divide? These long, thin chromosome strands become straighter and they, they kind of coil up on themselves, they become much thicker and shorter, and they become visible. As they are preparing to divide, you also notice that it's not actually made of one strand, there are two strands there, and that's where we get this characteristic X shape from. Um, but we won't worry about that for the moment. What the important point is, is that DNA is in the nucleus, is these long strands called chromosomes. Now we can split a single chromosome up. I'll just go back to, to looking at um, a chromosome as um, a single strand for a moment, you can imagine it's actually split up into different regions. And each region we might call a gene. So a gene is just a section of DNA. Each section or each gene would code for a different protein. Proteins include things like enzymes, which you come across in B3, antibodies are a type of protein, which of course you come across in um, B2, some hormones, and also structural things like um, keratin, protein found in hair and nails, collagen, protein found in your skin, and various other proteins in your body as well. So genes, these sections of DNA, are the instructions to make different proteins. You've got, and it depends what you look at, about 23, 25,000 different genes in your body, all arranged along these chromosomes. Okay, in fact you actually get two copies of each gene, but we'll come to that in another, um, in another little revision clip. So, chromosomes are found in the nucleus, the chromosome is a string of genes, each gene is a section of DNA. Remember those bits. You might notice on here as well I've left some bits blank. Because in fact, it turns out on a chromosome they're not absolutely packed full of genes. You get these spaces where the, there's still DNA there but it doesn't appear to do very much. It does have a role but it's, it's certainly not a gene. Okay. Right. As we mentioned earlier, in humans we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 
The first 22, if we were to line them all up, and usually they're lined up in, in kind of descending order of size. I'm not going to draw all of them. This is the way that we might see it in the book. Sometimes you'll see them as the X shape, but again, it doesn't matter. We can still call them chromosomes. It makes no difference to us. We can line them all up. The only odd one is the 23rd pair. The final 23rd pair of chromosomes you will see either drawn as two large ones or one large and one small. And these are sometimes called the sex chromosomes. Girls inherit, females inherit, two X chromosomes. Boys, males inherit an X chromosome and a much smaller Y chromosome. Now this isn't actually true in all organisms, it's certainly true in mammals. Uh, in birds it's actually reversed. The female is XY and the male is XX. Some other organisms, things uh, you think of reptiles and crocodiles, um, their gender um, is, is determined by the temperature the eggs were incubated at. So it's not common throughout all organisms, but certainly is in humans. It's completely random at the moment of fertilisation, um, which of these combinations you're going to get. It's actually the sperm that will determine um, gender, because the egg cell can only ever have an X chromosome in it. If you remember that egg cells have got half the number, and the normal cells would have 23 pairs, an egg cell would only have 23 chromosomes, so that when the sperm cell meets it, 23 from the father, 23 from the mother, it adds together. Half the sperm cells will have an X chromosome in, half of them will have a Y. It actually turns out, when, when you look at the numbers, Y chromosome um, carrying sperm cells are actually slightly more likely to um, fertilise the egg. But because there are so many problems with when it develops, um, males are, are much more likely to uh, not develop in the womb, so the baby um, would never grow beyond fertilisation stage. Um, in fact, it wouldn't grow at all. What's so important about the Y chromosome? Well, again, if I draw it just as a single strand, there is a chromosome, uh, excuse me, there is a, a region on here, on our Y chromosome, called the sex determining region of the Y chromosome. And in here are the instructions to make certain hormones called androgens. Now the most familiar androgen we'll come across is testosterone, um, the, the uh, hormone we associate with maleness. Generally speaking, there are other hormones in there as well, we, we call them generally androgens. If this um, sex determining region is present on the Y chromosome, it, it's there in the, uh, the, the fertilised egg cell and the zygote, it will start to develop as a male. In fact, it doesn't start working for... Um, it, it, doesn't actually switch on until several days in, I think it's about six or seven days. So in fact the embryo would start developing um, as a female until these hormones are released and start to do their job.